in search of soil. And whether you're adding molasses or humic acid or even compost to the soil, those are ways that humans try to build soil. We add stuff to the top or we pour stuff on or we try and turn stuff into the soil. But another way soil can be built is just by nature doing it. Plants. Putting plants in the ground and letting plants help encourage microbial life underneath the soil by getting that carbon pump going, collecting the sun rays, turning it into sugar, and then injecting that sugar into the soil to feed microbial life. When you think about plants building soil, are there fungal favorite plants? Like I'm thinking cover crops that you could plant that would encourage fungi to grow either while the crops are living or that the fungi could feed off when the cover crops are terminated. What are your thoughts on that? Are there crops that are more fungally than bacterially favored? Yeah, if if you want to use, um, and, and see, we always recommend cover plants that are perennial okay. because they're, and you want the really short, low-growing ones, um, they put their roots down deep into the soil, typically. They're perennial plants. They're going to get those down. They're fairly, they're somewhat woody, typically. Um, and so short, low-going things, so they're not going to interfere with whatever crop you're trying to grow. Um, but you don't have to mow these down. You don't have to crimp them. You don't have to do anything year after year after year for the next 2,000 years. We could have the same cover plants growing and never have to do anything to add more mulch or add more compost or all the other things that are so laborious when we're trying to maintain a garden or um, an acre of your farm or something. So that could be enough. So that's enough because they're going to, you know, you harvest the above ground part of your plant, you let the residues fall to the surface of the soil. And because these cover plants are maintaining that biology in the soil it doesn't matter that it that your your crop above ground got um, all dried out you know really hot dry conditions which is what we want to you know before we harvest any seeds but if your um, soil surface dried and got all hardened out all of your biology has either gone down into the soil or a lot of that biology has died, which means now you're going to have to do something to bring back that biology that shouldn't have died. It should have been covered by something, but the easy way to do it is to seed in that perennial crop once, and then it's there forever. And it's going to protect your soil surface from drying out. It's going to protect your soil surface from one of the most compacting factors ever invented, which is rainfall, falling from the sky and smacking on your soil. That's a compacting event. Oftentimes you will see the compaction layer forming at the surface, but if it's not forming here, it's forming down here, usually at about four to six inches. And there's a compaction layer in your soil that won't let your roots grow down as deep into that soil as you want them to grow. And then those cover plants will maintain the biology in your soil after you've harvested your crop plant. Right. So you're still making sure you're keeping the balance where it needs to be for whatever plant you're trying to grow. Make sure you're matching your cover plant to what you want to grow here. It means that you don't rotate your crops you may rotate within the same successional stage, but you wouldn't want to grow brassicas here one year and then corn here the next year. The brassica wipe out all the mycorrhizal fungi that the corn has to have in order to be able to yield well. You, know, you put two, all this uh, mycorrhizal spores back into the soil to, in order to grow your crop this year, and now the next year you put the brassica on there. You are not going to be growing brassica if you've got a massive amount of mycorrhizal colonization in that system. So you stop rotating kind of mindlessly. Right. You rotate and you stay within the same successional stages, not mixing these uh, things that need, need mostly bacteria versus things that need mostly fungi. And so 
the exudase coming out of the root system of that perennial plant maintain the biology where you want it to be so you could keep growing corn in the same place year after year after year after year after year so um you know here we go with the organic regs organic says the organic management system says you have to rotate crops because they have the mistaken understanding that if you plant the same plant for very long, it's somehow going to remove too much of one or two nutrients. That's not how soil works. You keep planting something in the same place, you'll get um, some dominant organisms kind of taken over. But if you have the cover plant in there, now you've got, yep, the main crop, but why not make certain that you've got five or six different species of plants growing as that short, low-growing cover plant or ground cover is another term that people use for these kinds of plants. And so now you have a mix. You're going to maintain all the different species of bacteria and fungi and protozoa and nematodes and microarthropods and earthworms and everything else that should be in that soil. So you don't lose diversity. Now, people always say you're going to, if you plant the same thing in the same place year after year, you're going to develop a massive number of disease causing problems. Uh, you're going to have pests like you wouldn't believe. They just get worse every year. You can't mean, keep growing the same thing in the same place. But you're preventing the diseases and the pest problems from developing by having this diversity. Nutrient cycling is always going to go on. Your plant's always going to have all the nutrients that it needs every second of every day, it will never be stressed. And the diseases and pests never come into that part of your garden. So we've got to do a little bit of readjustment of people's thoughts about um, having to rotate plants. If you maintain good biology in your soil, you don't ever have to rotate your plants. Keep growing the same thing in the same place for as long as you want to. The whole idea of not rotating crops and growing the same crop year after year in the same location, it's interesting. And it it parallels, I guess, the natural analogy would be a grassland, one that's not successional, but one that lives for thousands and thousands of years where you more or less have the same species of grass growing in that same space. And you're getting all that nutrient cycling through herbivores and fires and that type of thing that have a robust, diverse microbial community below ground that enable this huge grass biomass to grow above ground that's never really changing. There is no crop rotation in a grassland. It's healthy. And when it isn't, the system fixes itself. So is, is that what we're mimicking here? Yep. I, I like all the, like the blueberry meadows that people have in, um, here in Oregon, up in the mountains. As far as we know, and going back into Indian lore, this has been a blueberry patch for the last thousand years. And yet it's some of the best blueberries you'll ever taste in your whole life. And they're not sick. They're not unhealthy. They're not attracting. To, how can that be? What it means is our understanding of agriculture is flawed as human beings. When we start paying attention to how nature manages things, and we start changing our agriculture to work the way nature works, because nature's only been managing to do this um, process for the last three and a half to four billion years. I think she's had a little bit of time to figure it all out. Why do we human beings have to be so arrogant that we think we know better than nature. So pay attention to what nature does. And probably the, the most important tool that you need is a microscope. So you'll be able to see what nature is actually doing and then mimic her. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.